Hi everyone, Tom here with a video tutorial on how to do the seesaw technique. Um, so you may have seen a video uh, going around um, doing this technique on the hi-hat, which um, after about a week or so everyone dubbed the seesaw, which I thought was quite cool. As I can clearly see, loads of you have already got this down. You've worked it out, that's amazing. It's so cool to see. Um, for those, so this is for you guys that haven't quite worked it out, or if you have worked it out, then, you know, maybe pick up a few tips from this or, or whatever. Um, first of all, thank you all so much for your comments and likes and shares and messages and, and all sorts. It's been really humbling to, to, to see that. And also, obviously, a huge, massive thank you to Vic Firth for sharing the original video. It would never have become as popular as it, it did if it wasn't for you guys, so I'm hugely grateful for that. Uh, right, so let's get started. So just before we get started, obviously I can't uh, claim full responsibility for this. Um, I was inspired by Carl Palmer from ELP. He came down to our local college, I, was, I think I was 18 years old, a um, long time ago. And he did an amazing solo uh, just using snare and hi-hat. And then at the end of his solo, he and I was just like, whoa, <laughs> completely blown away by that. So I went away and learned how to do it or taught myself how to do it. And after I worked that out, I thought, hey, let's try and put it into a, a groove. So before we even begin to, to, to go through the method of playing it on the hi-hat, the, the, the thing that we really have to get down first before we do anything is having good finger technique um, whilst holding the drumsticks. So for you guys that aren't familiar with that, uh, so if you, if you hold the stick match grip, I believe it's German grip, and basically you're using those fingers, your three remaining fingers, uh, to push that stick into the palm of your hand. And if you want to figure out how to do that, I was taught a really, really cool technique by a local drummer here in Cornwall uh, called Pip Harbin. So basically what you do is you you start by holding the stick between um, your thumb and finger, uh, just like so, at the very, very end of the stick. And then what you want to do is use these fingers to push your stick into your forearm, okay? It's a really good way to practice your rudiments. So as you can see, I'm doing a single stroke roll here, okay? But the main thing you really want to be able to do is to play uh, full sixteenths or fast apes, I guess, um, with your leading hand. So my leading hand is my right hand. So if you can successfully get that stick to push into your forearm every single time, then you've got it. You want to be able to achieve basically having your, your, your hand flat and moving that hi-hat, sorry, that stick, moving that stick. It's the first time I've done this, as you can probably tell. Um, yeah, moving that stick without having to use your wrist. I'm just using my fingers there. If you use the wrist, obviously you can see you're bringing it up and down. So, so that's that. So if you're unfamiliar with that technique, pause the video and get that down, especially with that leading hand. Once you get that down, it's... It's kind. It's a lot simpler than it looks, and it's all about trial and error. Okay, so I'm going to just go through my process of of how I do this. Okay, so first of all, what you want to do is start with the stick at about 45. So your left stick, your non. Well, this is my left stick, your non-leading hand. Okay. On the the hi hat, tip touching, sort of around about the edge there. Okay. And then you place the right stick on top of it. Now. I'm using Vic Firth sticks, and it's actually quite handy because the logo is around about where that sweet spot is of the drumstick, okay, where you get that full movement, okay? So my stick is, the tip is at the end of the hi-hat. Um, and you want to try and get, you kind of want to clip the tip of the stick in just there so that there's no more room for it to move, okay? And then again, taking that finger technique into, uh, into account, Drop the drumstick and as quickly as you can, move those fingers. It's quite handy to practice this on a ride cymbal because there's a lot more surface area. It just doesn't sound as cool.
So if you have a if you have a ride symbol flat, I find that works really really well too. A couple of things I'm seeing in your videos of you guys trying this out, and it still looks absolutely great, is um, is that stick leaving the other sticks. I'm seeing quite a lot of um, that that sort of thing. Um, in order to have full control of that drumstick um, for as long as you can, you can't let that right stick leave the left stick. Okay. And another thing I'm seeing as well is it is is like a natural reaction to push that stick to stop it from leaving the hi-hat. Let it leave the hi-hat. It's going to happen, okay? I can't tell you how many times I've poked myself in the eye trying this out, you know, trying to get the technique down. So if it ends up falling off the whatever, just pick it up or have another drum stick at the ready. Do you know what I mean? And technically, you've just got to... Just try your best to move that stick right or left on, on the sort of center of the drumstick there as best as you can. That's all I can say to do really. As I say, as I said before, it's trial and error. Just keep going with it. Just keep going with it. And yeah, you'll get it down. So next up, let's work out how to place that inside a groove. Okay. Um, you know, once you get once you get that bit down, that's that's the hard part. Okay, the rest is is pretty straightforward. So what we're going to do to to make it as simple as possible is we're going to try and sort of close the gap with how many seesaws um, we're going to do. Okay, so we're just going to focus on four sixteenth notes, one eander. Okay, one eander, one eander. Okay. Now you notice what I'm doing there is when I drop the stick, my left hand leaves. And I keep it around about here. Um, a, it looks pretty cool. It looks like I'm kind of doing a bit of magic. Um, but B, that's to be ready to grab the drumstick. And you've got to be super, super confident with the grab. Okay, it's like a, a it's like a, a snake you're trying to <laughs> trying to stop from leaving the hi hat. Okay, um, so we're gonna get four hits there, and you're gonna bring the or four wiggles, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Um, Four, four, four of those notes, and then grab one e and up, one e and up, one e and up. Okay. Now you'll notice the right stick is is left and is then ready to play the snare drum. One e and a two. Do that again. One e and a two. So you had four notes there, and then straight to the snare drum with your right stick. One e and a two. One e and a two. One e and a two. Okay. Now, all we got to do now is basically, I would say, find your your comfort zone speed with this. Mine personally, the best control I've got is about 110 beats per minute. So find your find your comfort speed, and just go for it with a metronome. So we're now going to place it in a dead simple eighth note groove. So around about 110, one and <laughs> just sort of slightly off that Billy Jean tempo. And we're going to now place that inside it. Okay, so we're going to go one and two. Now you're going to finish on just the snare and hi-hat. One and two. No and on the two. Because then you need the time to do the drop. One and two and then to the drop, okay? Now, I can't show you this slowly because as I said, 110 is my sort of, my, my comfort speed, okay? One and two. So I think that's that's it, really. As I said, it's it's all about confidence. It's always about having that strong finger technique and it's all about trial and error. Just Just keep going with it. And then once you've once you've nailed that those four sixteenth notes, upgrade it to eight sixteenth notes. One e under two e under or whatever. Yeah, you place that into a halftime groove. One and two. Or the Gadsden groove. Or whatever. Just just use your imagination and, and have fun with it. So thank you all very much for tuning in and watching this. Uh, it's all very much appreciated. 
if you have any comments or questions, whatever, please feel free to comment or send me a message or whatever you want to do. I'm more than happy to do a follow-up video uh, from this one to answer any questions or offer any more guidance that I can with this. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Go out, drum, enjoy yourself, and I'll see you all very soon.